Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and this is five more things that I love about Svelte over React. Now, keep in mind, this is just my personal opinion. These are five things that I personally like more in Svelte than React. Feel free to disagree. There is always room for disagreement. Now, the first of these things, number one, is the event modifiers. Now, in Svelte, you determine event by saying on colon the event name, whether that's click, submit, whatever. However, how many times have you used prevent default on a form? Just about almost always when you're working in this stuff, you don't want the form to submit. You don't want the page to reload. In Svelte, you have on colon submit pipe prevent default right there in the form event. You don't have to run this e dot prevent default in every single function you run. You can just tack it on to the end there. And that's not the only one of these that exist, but prevent default is my favorite. So number two, the choice of library fatigue. In React, you're typically looking at, well, sometimes lines of imports. And granted, many of these are my own imports here, so this might not be a great example. But in React, typically you're dealing with a ton of imports. Have you ever tried to write complex forms without Formic? Have you ever tried to write complex state uh, without, I don't know, Redux or easy peasy or even React context, right? You are constantly bringing in a ton of libraries to do anything in React. And you could very well write it in yourself. But for the most part, since React is a slimmer framework than Svelte, and Svelte has reasons why it can be a wider framework, you're not shipping more code, but you're choosing an animations library, for instance. You got to pick one first, but then you have a library. That library has its own dependencies. That library can be updated, and you have to keep your code in up to date with all of those dependencies, and you have to stay on track of all of that stuff, or else you could be very well getting behind in an update. They release a big API change, and who knows, you're stuck using an old version that is no longer getting new features or maybe not even supported. So in Svelte, most of these things are taken care of by Svelte itself. State, don't need a library. Animations, don't need a library. Routing, don't need a library. There's so many of these things in Svelte, and I could go on and on about this because they exist nonstop where you run into things where you say, oh, wow, I don't need a library. Forms, don't need a library. Wouldn't even think about using one, to be honest. So with Svelte, you end up using way less libraries, less dependencies, less mysterious code that you're bringing into your application. Number three. Now this one, <laughs> this one's kind of funny for some people because have you ever written a React component and you tried to output several different components next to each other and gotten the whole React doesn't understand why this isn't an array issue or React can't output these things next to each other? Uh, and then you have to learn about fragments or you have to return on a comma separated array. This is something that React should do for you. It doesn't. Um, it's really obnoxious to always have to use this fragment syntax all over the place. When in Svelte, doesn't care. You'll never have to think about a fragment. Not only that, but you don't have to have that overhead of even having the knowledge of what the templating language JSX cares to return. I don't care if it needs to return an array or not. Uh, it, it is not even in my brain. And my brain can be filled up with many other things that are more important than whether or not return needs an array or whether or not I need these little fragment brackets around everything in my entire site to avoid really nested divs. Number four, the usage of prop names. How many times have you seen this in React? Filter value equals filter value. Oh. To, to me, this is redundant as <laughs> like this is, look at it in this one component, path name equals path name, filter value equals filter value, filter value equals filter value. This is a small component and it is three times in this one singular component where in Svelte, you can do what we should have had in JSX from day one, which is just bracket the prop name. This passes in the tutorial playlist variable as a tutorial variable prop, which is how it should have always been, but it has never been. So this is one of my favorite things. It really cuts down on, it cuts down on typing the same thing. It cuts down on redundancy. And if you need to rename something, you can rename it. Easy. All right. And the fifth one in this video, and let me tell you, <laughs> there'll be another video because 
I got lots of things here. I could keep going on this, but the fifth one in, in this video specifically of five things that I like more in Svelte is going to be the usage of state. Now, state in Svelte is largely two different ways. You have the usage of just straight up variables, as in I create a variable like can buy tutorial. That variable can then be updated by functions or anything. This is a reactive statement. This is this is kind of the equivalent of the use effect, which will probably be featured in my next video. But this is just a variable. You update this variable, it changes your UI. That is state at its most basic. Now, you may be needing more complex state in which you can subscribe to writable database stores. And database stores can be as simple or as complex as you want or need them to be. For instance, the user store for us is just a simple store. We created a writable store and you can access any of these properties out of the user store as if it were just an object. And if you needed to update them, you can update them. You can even throw a dollar sign in front of there to reactively get the properties from them just by subscribing. So this syntax is a nice little syntax helper. It's not too magical and it stays out of the way. But let me tell you, state in Svelte is a dream. And if you're worried about complex state, in fact, that's one of my biggest complaints that I hear on Twitter is that like, well, it doesn't have the complex state needs and requirements that React can do. No, you can have, this is a custom store here where you get access to the subscribe, update, and set. You can set your properties. You can run functions. You can get the state and you can update the state, create a new object and return that new object the exact same way you did in Redux or context or use state in the past, but you don't have to. And that's the best part is that really it can be as complex as you want it to or need it to be. And it can be also as simple as you need it to be without the extra overhead, unnecessary complexities. So I hope you enjoyed. These were five more things that I enjoy more in Svelte than React. So if you want to learn more about Svelte or React or even Vue or just straight up HTML, GitHub or anything, head on over to leveluptutorials.com. You can sign up today at leveluptutorials.com forward slash pro. And if you sign up for the year, you save 25%. We release a new tutorial course every single month. This month's course is coming to you from Colby Fayok. He's going to be talking about Next.js and e-commerce. And then the course after that is going to be on web components. So we have a lot of cool stuff coming up on leveluptutorials.com. Check it out.